and welcome to Tuesdays with Annette. I hope you've got your apron on like I have because I'm ready to cook for you today. And if you want to cook it with me, you know you could have downloaded the recipe from the website. And today I'm making a fabulous recipe out of book four. You know, I'm at the moment, I'm bringing back the classics. Well, this is a real old one. This is the uh, Tasty Meatloaf out of book four. Yep, it's out of book four. It's a fantastic recipe and I think every country does a version of their meatloaf, but this is the Annette version. But before we get into all of this, let's go and wash our hands. Alrighty. So we just need to do our 20 second wash and I'll go through all the ingredients and also the equipment that we need to make the simple meatloaf. Now, if you say to me, oh, meatloaf, that's poor man food, I'm sorry, no, it's fabulous food, and I want you to try it, please do, because it's just such a great meal, but it is a budget meal, and I think there's nothing wrong with that. We can always do with a cheap meal for dinner of a night. Okay, washing. All right, so let's talk about our winners first because we need to brag about that because they're very excited, these three ladies, because what they did to win today was they posted their pictures of Mongolian lamb, which, hello, I'm sorry, I forgot to sprinkle the sesame seeds on the top. Silly me. But look, you know what? Three winners were excited. Julianne Curtis, Di McCarthy and Debbie Lowe. All won a person signed copy of the book um, three. So today it's all about book four and we're making tasty meatloaf. So equipment wise, let's get that out first. So I've got a grater, a chopping board, measure spoons. I've got some gloves because it really is about mixing in that mix and I don't like to get it under my nails or in my rings. So I use gloves so I don't know whether you want to or not. Um, I've also got my loaf tin. Now in the recipe it tells you a large loaf tin, but I want to show you the difference so you're not confused. This is the, uh, a normal, um, normal small loaf, but this is what we call the large. So make sure you're using that because it won't fit in that. It's too big a mix. The thing is, if for example you're saying, I don't have a loaf tin, what am I going to do? Okay, what about something like this? You could make it in a casserole dish or a round one, you know, a round casserole dish. You just cut it into pies probably instead of slices. But obviously in this recipe, it is better probably to do it in the loaf tin if you have it. Now I've also got measure cups. I've got a bowl to make everything with. <clears throat> and obviously I've got my trusty Neoflam knives ready to go. And uh, so let's get started. So to start with, you're going to preheat your oven to 180 degrees fan force. Remember, 180 degrees fan force. The, the ingredients we need, we need some cooking spray, three slices of grain bread. We need zucchini, carrot, a small onion. I do red capsicum because I like the mix, but it's up to you, whatever you use. And here we've got 500 grams of really lean beef mince. Now you can, in the variation, use pork or chicken, um, but please make sure it's the lean versions. Now with the pork and the chicken, you'll want it to look a bit pinky, not white, because that means there's no fat in it or the skin off the chicken. Um, whereas you can see, this is beautiful and lean red meat. So that's 500 grams of beef mince. <clears throat> we've got two eggs. We're going to only use two egg whites there. I've got some beef stock powder. Um, some oyster sauce. Now I've already pre-done my rice. I hope you have too because we did write that in the feed. We have to have your rice cooked ahead to make this with me. But if you forgot, that's okay. Make it after the show and no problems. And you know, I want to see your photos. But you use a third a cup of raw brown rice in this recipe and then you cook it like it says on the packet. And I actually just put it out on a tray to give it a bit of time to dry out. Because if it's too mushy, then it may crumble. So that's the rice. So we've also got to use a sachet of the cream of mushroom cuppa soup. I've got some skim milk here to, uh, as well. This is the herb we're using. It's mixed herbs. So that's a really good one in it. Bit of pepper. And I think that's everything for us. So let's get started. All right, so let's put this here. I'm going to do the bread first because I want to get that soaking. So it's quite simple. I just put my three slices in the bowl and then it's a third a cup of skim milk. 
and this will soak up in the milk and make it quite mushy which is what we want but I like to give it a chance to get mushed up before I start doing anything else so just I just pour a little bit over each of the slices there we go and then just mix it in you let, let that milk soak in so this is what you should be doing if you're cooking with me now. Hello, if you just joined me, I've got some mush going on here because I'm making Tasty Meatloaf out of book four. So just mixing that milk in to really soak into the bread and we'll just leave that to one side. There we go. So that's that done. That's not too hard, are you coping? Okay, so now let's prep the veggies up. So we're going to do the onions first. So get your sharp knife. And it's a small onion, you don't want a big onion. Or if you have a big onion, we'll just do half an onion. So first of all, we're going to take off the skin, peel that off. And with this recipe, you really want a fine dice, okay? It says it in the recipe, um, but you don't want big chunks of onion in there. Or same with capsicum, we're going to dice the capsicum. You want it really quite fine so that it just all mixes in together for the meatloaf. All right. Okay, so now we're going to get in your knife and you know how we're doing it there in that way. Go through the layers, then back again. And this is where you're going to make it really close. Instead of chopping too far, get in and really nice and fine will make this absolutely fabulous. Now the thing is, if you're saying, oh, I do like a bit of meatloaf, well, you know, I've got one other meatloaf recipe for you and you'll find that in book uh, Cooking for One or Two. That's right. And it's a fabulous different version and it's called Mexican Meatloaf. And it's really good. You use beef mince with that too, um, but it's really quite a different recipe. So that's in cooking one or two. And um, if you're looking at this recipe and thinking, this is a little bit like ripper rissoles, then you're right. It has got some of the um, same ingredients, like obviously with the, the rice and the grated vegetables. So I'm going to give you some tips today that will help you. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put everything just in the bowl as we go. Make it easy, I say, people. Let's In it goes. There's our onion. Let's do your capsicum. Now we want half a cup of thinly diced, to remember, or finely diced is probably the better word. So how you do that is it's about just getting in there with those little slices. But like in the ripper rissole, I'm going to give you some little tips that actually aren't in the recipe. And I wonder if it might help you with that recipe as well. And this is what I love about doing these cooking shows is I love to give you some little extra bonus tips when you're making them which makes it even more special. So we want half a cup. You could use any colour capsicum, but I kind of do the red because I've got the green coming in from the zucchini. That should probably be enough. So as you're doing, we're chopping up. This is what we do. It's all about preparing ahead get it all chopped, ready to go, and then we just mix it up. Okay, there's half a cup. Now that's going to go into my bowl. There we go. And now let's get grating. Uh, where's my grater? Here we go. So now I've just got a little hand grater because we only need half a cup. And what I love about this recipe is the kids, like in the ripper rissoles, 
they're getting veggies, but they don't really kind of know they are. So it's a bit of a trick one, but I love it because you, you think you're just having a meat dish, but you're getting lots of veggies as well. Now, I'm going to measure half a cup. That's perfect. Now, let me give you the first tip of the day. All right, I find zucchini quite wet. So what I do is I suggest, which isn't in the recipe, but I suggest you actually put it on some paper towel and take out some of the moisture. Because look how wet that is. You know, there's a lot of water in zucchini. So, just a little bit of a brush over, that's great. And where's it going? Yes, put it in with all the rest of it. Now, let me move this out of the way. Because the next thing we've got to do is the capsicum. I mean the carrot, thank you very much. All right, so let's get the grater again. And half a cup. See, this is not hard to make, is it? Basically, the only chopping is the onion and the capsicum. The rest is just grated and then it's called bung it all together. And the key with the meatloaf is really mixing it well. Don't rush the mixing. Okay, half a cup. Actually, I did a real big chunk out of my finger. Zoom on it, Billy. Can you see? I got a big chunk out of my thumb when I was grating the other day. Uh, yeah. So I'm not using that other big grater anymore. I'm going back to the basics. Okay, a little bit more. Remember, you've got your oven preheated 180 degrees fan force. That's important. And we're going to do half a cup. Yeah, maybe just a little bit more, I reckon. I hope you're keeping up with me because this meatloaf is going to be one I think you'd love. Fantastic to take on picnics. We're getting into close to spring. There we go, that's better. And in we go. It's great hot or cold. You know, and remember this recipe is on the website. If you, uh, if you need to get it, you don't have book four. So let's move all this out of the way. I'm just going to wipe down my mess to give you time to catch up with me because I know I can get a bit quick. I just get excited and want to get the recipe in the oven so I can be in my belly. <laughs> All right. Now what I'm going to do next is basically put everything in the bowl. So you can see I've got that happening. But what I'm going to do is, and I suggest you do it too, is I put these gloves on. Yeah. So just put some gloves on if you don't want to get it all messy. Now remember this is out of book four. It's a fabulous book. So let's get our, um, ba uh, our loaf tin. Get that ready to go and just give that a spray. Done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put everything in. So I'm going to put in my two egg whites. So this is where you're saving the fats of a traditional meatloaf. Normally meatloaf would probably have quite fatty meat in it and you'd put it, the whole egg in. So I've saved 12 grams of fat just by not using the yolk and really the egg white is what will help bind it and keep it fabulous. And now what I'm going to do is I just want to give this a mix up first. So let's just, because I want that bread to really soak in that moisture. And this is the key with meatloaf, is really mixing it well. Thanks for joining me today. I'm so excited every Tuesday and Thursday when I get to catch up with you. I hope you're doing well. All right, so that's a good little start. Now we're going to put all the other ingredients in, like everything else. So let's start. We want two teaspoons of the beef stock powder. 
I don't think it can get much easier than this, truly. I want a half a teaspoon of the mixed herbs, remember? Let me move that down. That'll give it a little bit of extra flavour. I want some pepper. And you know what's great about this is I think young and old love it. Everybody loves a meatloaf, really. And uh, I've actually, oh, put in the wrong thing. That's my bin over here. Now we're putting the sachet of the cream of mushroom cup of soup in. And that's to build the flavour and also to hold it together. It's great. So there's our, um, our soup thing. We need two tablespoons. Now remember when you're working with me, it's always the 15 ml tablespoon. And we want two tablespoons of oyster sauce. And this really is a great way with beef to really pack the flavours up. Because remember, this recipe is called Tasty Meatloaf. So this is why you're adding all these extra things in, because otherwise it can be a bit plain and boring. All right, so that's done. All I've got to do now is add in the rice. So let's put that in. Remember, you would have cooked it up ahead. And if you don't want to drain, you know, dry it out like you know, you're in a hurry, just really make sure you strain it well and, and get as much of that water out as you can. And finally, in goes the mince. Boom! So we've got everything in. So now it's just a matter of getting in and really mixing that all in well. Now the variations, yes, you know I love to do variations. So the beef actually, if you wanted to make it, is 5.7 grams of fat to serve, or the chicken is 6.5, and the pork is 3.5 grams of fat a serve. Now it's enough for six people, so it's a generous um, amount. And I have a question for you. Yes, I need to know, because I'm a sticky beak, when you have meatloaf, or even like rissoles and that, do you serve it with gravy? Or do you serve it with maybe tomato sauce? I need to know, is it a gravy thing with meatloaf? Or do you do like a tomato or a barbecue sauce? I'd be interested, so in the comments, let me know. All right, so see, I'm giving this a really, really good mix. It's really important. And this is looking a bit fabulous, I might say so. Now, did you notice that in the recipe, I used the bread? Now, that will help hold this together. But look, it's something that I remember my grandmother doing. Like, say, for example, you are made bolognese for dinner and it's for four of you. And suddenly you've got a visitor arrived and you go, want to stay for dinner? And you go, oh my gosh, we don't have enough to give, a, to give them a, a serve. This is where you could actually do that again and put in that bolognese mix, two or three slices of bread or in a stew or something like that where it's got a sauce to it because it actually will extend the quantity for you so it stretches it further. And this is something the old, in the old days they used to do when they were trying to be budget conscious. Oh look, this is looking a bit fabulous here. So now, look at that. How gorgeous is this? So in to, into the tin, you go. This is a set, it serves six, 180 degrees fan force, and you'll cook it for an hour. So what's important is this. Really press down firmly so the loaf will just meld together. And this way you're going to have less chance of it being crumbly. And this is what you could do with the uh, ripper rissoles if you love making them and you found that they crumble sometimes. Do the whole thing with the, the uh, rice and dry it out ahead as well as the zucchini. Yeah? Okay, so look at this. I think, I hope you've, you've caught up with me. Flatten it nice and beautiful. Let's put this in the oven now. It's going to go for an hour. 
Set your timer, 60 minutes. And there we go. Let me just wash my hands. Now, the thing is with the um, loaf, when it's done, I really suggest you leave it in the um, cake tin for about five or 10 minutes just to let it settle and then you can turn it out. It's fabulous with salad or mash and veg and really it's great cold. But look, I've done one for you this morning. Diane's already dibbed this to take home. Thank you very much. Haven't you, Diane? Yeah. Yes, she's got her eye on it. So there we go. There is the simple, or, you know, the tasty meatloaf out of book four. It's enough for six. Uh, so, you know, I'll tell you now, let's get our knife in. What you would do is you would cut that in half and then you would cut three big chunks so that you get, um, oh no, yeah, six, yeah, three and three. Or you could cut it in half and then cut that into six so you get two slices. But let me just go in. Let's open it up. There you go. There's the meatloaf. I mean, God, who knew weight loss could be so deliciously healthy? There is the simple, simple, fabulous recipe. Another one of those home styles that we love. So if you would like to win this cookbook, which has the Ripper Rissoles in it, if you go, what the heck is a Ripper Rissole in it? It's in this book as well. So you can be in it to win it. So all you have to do is like, share, and then take a photo. That's right, get your phone out. If you have one, hopefully, well, you would probably, and take a photo and put it in the comments and then you'll be in it to win it. So now, next, this Thursday, I'm in the kitchen again. You know, I do Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now, Thursday's one is another classic that I made up many years ago in book seven and it's the chicken and bacon pasta bake. Chicken, bacon, pasta, a bake. You have me at hello. So that's out of book seven. So I'm going to be making that one. And next Tuesday, the recipe is already up for you. Diane is a genius here. She's already thought ahead. She's a bit fabulous. And what is it? It is my chocolate banana cake. Oh, yes. Get your bananas ready, girls and boys, because we're going to be cooking and baking a cake. So that's what it's all about. So look, if you want any more tips or recipes, you know where to go simply too good.com.au and remember budget meals are fabulous as well so enjoy your meatloaf and take care